Welcome to Longmont Voices and Vision, a project of Longmont Public Media. In the midst of the darkest period in our lives, when we're bombarded 24 hours a day with news of the coronavirus and the human and economic carnage it's causing in our society, we're challenged to cope with our fears and anxieties while remaining hopeful about what lies on the other side of this crisis. This project presents an opportunity for Longmont residents to share with others how they're adjusting to new realities of social distancing and the kind of future they hope to experience on the other side of the crisis. I'm Tim Waters, host of these conversations and a Longmont Public Media volunteer. In this series, I'll be asking Longmont residents, many of them your friends and neighbors, three questions. What are you doing to get through this crisis? Even though we cannot be together right now, how are we staying connected to friends and families? And what's the future you are hoping to see and experience on the other side of this crisis? I hope you'll stay with this series and enjoy listening to your friends and neighbors and learn from them how they're getting through and what they're looking forward to in a new reality on the other side. Dick Lyons, thank you for your willingness to, to lend your voice and your vision to this project, Voices and Vision uh, of Longmonters, uh, at a time where we are experiencing uh, unprecedented changes in our lives with, with physical isolation and social distancing. Um, you know, we're all struggling with getting through this, but first tell us about who you are. And then I've got three quick questions for you. Okay. Uh, well, uh, I'm a grandfather uh, of three, father of two, and um, uh, married to my lovely wife, Jody, for 48 years, I think, uh, uh, this year. Uh, yes, 48. I always get the numbers, but, um, but that's what husbands do. Um, I'm a retired attorney, and we've lived in Longmont for... Uh, 41 years. Uh, so long-time residents. Uh, raised in Boulder and Estes Park. Went to the University of Colorado undergraduate. Uh, did a stint in the Army. I got, I, I was one of those that got drafted. Um, uh, Jody and I got married while I was uh, in the Army and decided to go to law school afterwards. And, and so Jody put me through law school and uh, um, came back here after a, a stint in Kansas City. So. There was just a little bit of feedback on somebody's from somebody's microphone there. So, but tell us uh, in an in an unprecedented moment in history, how are you getting through this period of social distancing? Well, you know, uh, I think it's kind of interesting. I, and I think after talking to some of my uh, friends about this, I think that all of us have gone through uh, uh, kind of three phases in this. The first. Uh, the first phase, when this first started, what, like three and a half weeks ago or whatever, um, we couldn't get enough of the news to find out all the facts. How's it going to affect us? Uh, what's going on? Um, how bad is it? Uh, so we were glued to the television uh, all day, all evening, just trying to gather the information uh, uh, to see what was going on. And then I think we entered into the next phase after about three or four days of that. And the next phase was what I call the survival mode, uh, where we assessed what, what do we need, you know? Um, so uh, we determined early on we needed the disinfectants and the gloves and the masks possibly. And so, uh, and then of course the whole food situation and figuring out uh, uh, how to order online or pick up uh, groceries and, and whatever. Uh, so uh, I call that the survival mode, <laughs> survivalist mode uh, phase. Um, so we got through that, and once we figured out, you know, what was going on, I think this past week, uh, last week, we finally entered into the third phase, which is an adjusted routine. Uh, we've adjusted to what what's going on. Um, so we've uh, uh, we figure out what housework is needed and we do, do, do that. We exercise, we contact family and friends to keep in touch. Um, 
we do update, you know, we keep current on the news, but we're not watching it 24 seven like we used to. Uh, and uh, we also make time, <clears throat> excuse me, I think my allergies are really acting up. Um, and for our alone time, uh, you know, we, we're fortunate to have a, a house that has an upstairs and a downstairs. And so that gives us an opportunity uh, either by design or by accident to have a little alone time. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned we love to go for walks and exercising now with masks. Um, and we've noticed that the neighbors are, are doing the same thing with respect to uh, being outside and passing each other with masks, giving space and whatnot. And then in the evening, we try to uh, uh, jointly watch some movie or Netflix or Amazon or something to try to entertain ourselves and take our minds uh, uh, off the situation. So yeah. that's that's basically what we've been doing. Are you staying connected to family and friends? Well, fortunately, uh, with uh, the modern uh, uh, conveniences, uh, our family, um, we uh, have children back on the East Coast and then in Europe, and so we do Wi-Fi and um, FaceTime. Uh, we fa try to FaceTime with the grandkids, uh, if not every day, every other day, or as, soon, as often as we can. And um, we read to them and, and uh, keep in contact with them, and uh, so that's really important. And now we've uh, discovered this magic uh, tool called Zoom, and uh, <laughs> which we're using right now, which we're using right now. And so in the past uh, well, five days, I think we've had a couple of uh, uh, virtual cocktail parties with friends uh, where we uh, pour a glass of wine and, and zoom in or FaceTime with them, depending on how many are, are participating. Uh, we did one last night with uh, our dinner group. So that was kind of fun. First time. And uh, so we're, we're trying to connect and uh, keep, keep, uh, in touch that way. Uh, also, just the old-fashioned emails. Um, I've taken a lot of time to reconnect with friends and and uh, and my sisters. There's uh, uh, don't live around here, and so um, uh, we've made some good contacts with that and are emailing regularly. So, yeah, that's a little about what we're doing. Assuming that uh, life will settle into some kind of routine on the other side of this, but it's. I think fair to assume that life will be different. What the, whatever the new normal is will won't won't reflect totally, you know, where we've come from. So, as we anticipate whatever that new normal is, what, what do you want to see? What's your preferred future on the other side of this? Well, you know, I think um, I, I, I think that the number one thing we need to do as a community is after this is over with, and I think that you as a community leader on city council. Uh, could could you know make this happen? Uh, I think the community needs to come together and have a discussion about um, uh, where we're going to go from here. There's there are going to be some tremendous changes both in the private and public sectors. I uh, I, I think uh, uh, let, let's just take schooling. Um, I was talking with a friend the other day um, online <laughs> about uh, education, and and he expressed uh, his concern. Uh, that he hopes that at least on the college and university level uh, that, that they don't abandon the traditional model of bringing young people together on a campus um, because it's going to be very easy for them to say, wait a minute, this, is, this, is, this online stuff is pretty easy. Uh, and he said, you know, in college especially, there's so much to learn uh, in, in a social gathering. Uh, so I think, um, you know, that's an example. I think we're going to have problems with uh, uh, retail, a small retail. Um, I think people are now getting into the habit and are now custom, uh, becoming accustomed and really have learned how to use these new things that you can order anything online, do anything you need to do, or, or the majority of things. I, I was impressed that, you know, uh, uh, our church, of course, went online. And uh, so last Sunday, you can see down at the bottom how many people are participating and it, it's grown. Uh, and we have quite a few of uh, older people, <laughs> I can, older than I, I'm 72, so I can say old, old folks. Um, and I, I'm impressed that they have adjusted. They have adjusted and have figured out 
how to use Zoom and how to figure it out. Uh, you know, I, I'm very, very uh, impressed by that. And I think we need to recognize that, that, that everyone is, is stepped up to a new level of technology uh, uh, education. They may not know all of the, all of, what all of these little things on the bottom mean or what you, what you do, but they can click, you know, for the connection. Um, the, uh, uh, I, I think that the businesses in Longmont, I think this, the, uh, the mayor delivered the message in the wrong manner, but I understand the basic nature of his concerns about um, how, um, uh, what effect this is having on small retail up and down Main Street or even in the shopping centers around town. Uh, it is going to have a profound effect and we're going to have to figure that out as well. I'm, I am confident that there's going to be uh, a lot of empty uh, service offices uh, in town that have now figured out that they can do business online. Uh, I talked to uh, one friend that has a business over in Boulder and he's already given notice uh, to his landlord that he's not going to use their office anymore, that they can really conduct their national business and, and it's a, a pretty, pretty successful national business entirely online uh, with their salespeople and their whatever. And I thought, wow, that's, that's a big change. Uh, so I think that's going to, to uh, really, really uh, have a profound effect. I think from the, uh, the public side, <clears throat> I think we we really need, and I don't know. This is probably not a uh, discussion for um, the city. Well, maybe it is. But what is the role of government? I think we need to take another look at that. Um, you know, for for decades, we've heard certain political segments of society saying, um, you know, we don't need the federal government. Smaller is better. Don't get involved in my life. And then, boom this comes along and we're seeing that we do have a, a need, the federal government does have a huge role in this and we're not sure if the federal government is performing that role, which is okay if everybody buys into the concept and then the states are empowered and have the ability to do what they can do. But as, you, as we're watching and observing, there's only a few states that have done that. And uh, you know, I, I was reading last night about California. Um, they have done such a marvelous job. Now they're going to export some of their PPE and, and masks and ventilators to states that are, are also hard hit. I think uh, Colorado, I, I, kudos to uh, Polis. I think he's done a marvelous job. Um, but I, I think that whole relationship between a uh, federal and state has to be uh, examined. We need to figure out where we're going on that. And I guess from state to local for with respect to the city and counties, I think that's going to be important. I think we need to reach a consensus on who, who what role each of those governments, each level has to play, how to coordinate and uh, be prepared for the next, next issue. Uh, and do we only come together for crises or do we do it on a regular basis? I mean, these are big, big policy issues. Socially, <laughs> uh, as uh, someone uh, mentioned uh, on Twitter the other day, do you think anybody is going to eat a piece of cake after a birthday cake by, when the when the celebrant blows out the candles anymore, I think, you know, everybody's gonna be, wait a minute, I don't, uh, want, I don't want to have a contagious piece of birthday cake. Uh, so, you know, I, I say that humorously, but I think that that's just an example of some of the things that are going yeah. on. Um, for instance, I, I was listening um, the other day and they said, well, we may be flattening the curve, we may be able to loosen this up, but we really don't have a vaccine yet, so we may have to do this all over again next fall and next winter. Oh my gosh, I hope not. But the point is, we're going to have to start changing and evolving our social structures. Um, you know, I think that's that's uh, going to be very important. One good thing, um, and I noticed it took a, 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 about two weeks. Um, I'm kind of involved in in. Um, many of the uh, um, nonprofit um, boards and commissions in town. And, and um, at first it was all emails, but now everybody's come together and figured out how to handle it. Uh, meetings, uh, I even, we even had a very important vote on, 
on one uh, board the other just yesterday. Um, and uh, we've never done that before. <laughs> Doing a roll call by uh, email, and uh, it was uh, pretty interesting. To, uh, so I, I think up and down the line for a private sector, public sector, and social, um, we're going to have some tremendous upheaval, and we need to be prepared to figure out how we're going to meet those challenges. And, and, and I think they, uh, you know, there's different ways to do that, but I think discussion groups and community events and whatnot uh, would be of, of help. Dick Lyons, thank you for contributing to this project. Uh, take good care of yourself and your family. Okay, you too. Thanks. I want to thank Matt Elbrid for lending your voice and your vision to the Longmont Voices and Vision Project. Let's start by just learning a little bit about who you are. Yeah, thanks for having me. So uh, yes, my name is Matt Eldred. I'm the executive director for TLC Learning Center, formerly known as the Tiny Tim Center, a, a 65 plus year old nonprofit organization here in Longmont that serves uh, children with special needs and also typical children uh, from ages birth through age six in uh, childcare, early education setting, and children with uh, special needs for occupational, physical, and speech therapy needs from age birth to 12. Matt, in a, this kind of unprecedented moment in anyone's life and history, uh, everybody is challenged to figure out how to get through the kind of current situation. Yep. Share with us how you're getting through, how you're getting yourself through this. Yeah, so I guess my, my theme for the, the period that we're in right now is um, um, connection versus content. I think right now we're in a time where uh, just being able to connect with people is sometimes more important than the content that we're getting um, or that we're sharing. Uh, we have great resources from our county human services, state departments, and even federal um, sites that give great information. Um, although you can go down a lot of different rabbit holes and spend hours and hours trying to figure out an answer to a question that you didn't even know you were asking. And so the content is there, but what we're finding is, is that just the connection uh, through virtual ways or even in uh, social distancing, physical contact ways, right now is probably more important than ever. Uh, we, we know that that's the case for children. We've been preaching that for years about uh, the connection and the relationships uh, that are important for children to build from the ages birth to five. But uh, I, I am realizing now more than ever that that is just as important for adults, uh, especially as we're trying to um, be mindful of our social distancing and stay at home orders and trying to be safe, but also trying to stay connected not only to the outside world, but to those that we're closest to. And uh, you kind of take that for granted. And so I think right now connection versus content is the thing that we're saying for our staff as they try to connect with their students and children, uh, for our parents that they can stay connected both as they need to work, uh, as well as now that they're thrust into some roles that maybe they didn't know and they were underprepared for, where they're doing school from home, or they're doing, uh, trying to juggle childcare where they are more appreciative for the six to eight to 10 hours a day sometimes yeah. of the care that their kids were getting. Uh, we're finding that that is, um, we're seeing a lot more um, people that are thankful for the services that they were receiving when they're not receiving them anymore. So connection versus the content. The content is great, and the resources are super, uh, but it's really about staying connected with people this time. So talk about it. How, what are the forms? How are you staying connected? Yeah, so um, the other thing that we know is that children birth to five are much smarter and for whatever reason, it is built into their DNA that they understand technology sometimes better than, I felt like I was at least up on some things, uh, but my teenage, my boys would say that I don't know anything, uh, but I know that three and four and five year olds, it's intuitive. So it has been uh, virtually seamless in our ability to do therapeutic services via telehealth. I never would have thought that a nonverbal kiddo in a wheelchair could do a Zoom therapy session. Uh, what I didn't realize is that they were probably more able to do that than their parents and the therapist. Uh, and so we've been able to see that our kids um, have been able to do this. We preach you know, limiting screen time and all of those things, I think, which are still really important. But again, staying connected in these ways has not been as difficult as I thought it would be for therapy sessions, 
Uh, our kids uh, are now doing Zoom and uh, WebEx uh, circle times. Uh, our teachers are creating YouTube pages, which is creating content that I'm gonna steal for years um, that they're creating right now. So um, some of those methods have been really uh, fun. Uh, we've done now weekly staff meetings because we are currently closed. Um, as far as physically, uh, we don't have children in the building or teachers in the building, but we're doing weekly uh, staff meetings. I've seen more uh, about people's homes. I see you've got a city of Longmont map, it looks like behind you with all the districts and zones. <laughs> we're saying <right>. our wards. <laughs> the wards of the city of Longmont. Right. Right. So we're, we are probably more personally involved in each other's lives uh, through this. I know that our therapists are saying that uh, some of the things that they've been trying to do where they're teaching parents how to do certain physical things, that's not an option anymore now because they're not physically in the room. So a parent has to participate. Uh, so those have been some really positive things. And I guess the final thing is I'd say is our teachers, again, uh, we've been able to connect via Zoom with 45 plus people. And the best parts of the meetings are probably the last 10 seconds where we just unmute everybody and it's, hello, I miss you. It's good to see your kids. Yeah. Uh, so that's been really good. Yeah. It's, it's, I think, fair to assume that uh, on the other side of this uh, crisis that we're in, whatever the new normal is, whatever we settle into is going to be different than life before the pandemic. Uh, so as we do that, uh, there's some value in, in uh, framing and understanding what our preferred futures are. So what, what would be a preferred future for you? What do you want to move toward? What do you want to see and experience on the other side of this? Yeah. So, you know, I think the, the floods were a really good example of um, how we were able to rebuild and uh, how the local community comes together. And uh, in the end, we're stronger than we were before. Uh, I know that um, for, for us, as far as TLC Learning Center and the child care world in general, we often live in silos. We, we say we have wait lists and the place next door has a wait list and the place next door has a wait list, but we don't really know what the need is and this has kind of forced us as an industry to come together to figure out what are your needs, Child Care Center X, what are my needs, and how do we work better together? So we've been able to share resources, we've been able to share trainings, we've been able to share uh, communications to our parents. Um, how do you communicate uh, if and when you are open? Those child care centers that are open right now have some really good wellness policies in place that they're willing to share now with others where maybe before we were all kind of doing our own thing. So I think some, some centralized coordinated efforts, uh, we're having to do that now. And I hope that on the other side of this, that we won't lose those, um, some of those systems that we're building now, uh, both from a county level down to a local level, even down to an industry level of uh, the childcare industry. We're now sharing, uh, hey, do you have a family? I can't open, but I know there's three families that really need a place that are essential workers. Uh, and so we are better coordinating our efforts in terms of how do we meet the demand of the need for something as simple as childcare, but as complicated as we haven't been able to figure it out in the last 65 years of TLC Learning Center, at least. So I think on the other side, we will have some coordinated systems. I think we'll have some opportunities to build on those. Uh, and these are some things that we've already started. We've started an early childhood coalition that is talking about how do we better deliver uh, a, a service to all families, whether they're able to afford it or not. Uh, I think now we're having to have those conversations because it's very real that some of us may not be able to open or some of us might be able to open sooner uh, than others. So I think the future looks really good in terms of how do we support each other in terms of some systems deliveries. Uh, I think that's gonna relate to some funding opportunities. I think even public will around the need for um, how do we as an employment workforce uh, this issue around childcare, we've been talking about the importance of it, but it is never any more important than it is now when our essential workforce needs to be at work. And some of their barriers are, but what do I do with my kids? And Eldred, thanks for contributing to the Longmont Voices and Visions Project. Take care of yourself and your family. Thank you much. Thank you for your contribution to, of your voices and your vision to this project, Tyler, Kyson, and Macy May. So to get this started, just tell us a little bit about yourselves. 
right, um, I'm Macy May, and um, you know, I, I work for Longmont Public Media and Longmont Observer, and these are my two boys, Tyler and Kyson. And uh, you know, we're just you know community members, and we're just here to to help out however we can and to share our thoughts. In a time that's unprecedented in any of our lives, share with us how you're getting through the current situation. Do you want to talk about how you're getting through? Uh, I've just been playing a lot of video games and calling it friends. <laughs> that seems to be helping me get through. What about you, buddy? How are you getting through? Same as Ty, except for the friend calling. Yeah. Yeah. So we uh, we have a classroom set up in the dining room and my office in the dining room. So we're kind of, you know, co-working, if you will. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we have a good system going so that we can get our schoolwork done and get mom's work done. And then we have another system so that we make sure that we're exercising and staying healthy and uh, not just sitting all day and um, doing some other things to feed our brains like reading books and just you know trying to endure what we can so in an era of physical distance social distancing and physical isolation how are you staying connected obviously we can see how you're staying connected among the three of you mm -hmm. are you staying connected to other family members and friends uh so um we we have a very unique um well, maybe not unique, but a situation where uh, I'm divorced with their dad and he um, was kind of in isolation before the stay at home orders happened. And so we um, we aren't mixing our households. And so one of the ways is that he he will come visit and sit like 10 feet away from us and we try to have a conversation, you know, that way. So there's, you know, Face to face time, but then uh, this weekend is Easter weekend. Uh, we have a uh, Zoom meeting set up with their grandparents to have Easter dinner with them. Um, Tyler's birthday is coming up, so we're already planning on like a virtual birthday party and uh, inviting our front family at least to have dessert of their choice and making and you know have a few minutes of time with them. Um, but beyond virtual, I mean, we just we just kind of say hi to people on the street at our social distancing um, setbacks, and you know, just kind of get through. Otherwise, it's not too much different. I think for them, they tend to talk to their friends virtually anyway, so they they kind of just have more of that. Uh, we know that Tyler's spending more time on the telephone. It sounds like. So. Yeah. <laughs> On the other side of this, and there will be another side of this, uh, it's, it's, I think, fair to assume that life will be different. We just don't know how. Mm -hmm. uh, so the third question really is, what would you like to see? What would, you, what would you like to, at least parts of what the new normal will be, what would you like to see and experience on the other side of this? What's your prefer, preferred future? What do you think the future is going to be? Uh, uh, I just hope it goes back to normal. Yeah, I same. <laughs> uh, wow, that's that's an interesting question since, you know, I've been tied into the media so much that uh, the constant change is, is um, very noticeable to me and the social distancing and, you know, working from home and seeing how businesses have been hit and how they've adapted um, as best as they can. Um, I think it's going to be a very remote world that we're going to enter into because i think employers are really going to see some value to some of that but um hopefully we can get back into where we can socialize again and people don't feel that um that social distancing is such an important part of their lives that that the opposite is actually true because there's a lot of value in being in a group in a community physically <clears throat> together so. All right, Tyler, Kyson, and Macy May, thanks again for lending your voices and your vision to this project. Thank you. Thank you.